Okay, hey, this is Franco, and I am going to give you a really short video on the DB251205 breakout board that is available on eBay from companies like Long's Motor and several other importers, distributors. Uh, I have a feeling these boards are all manufactured by the same company, but I like to buy them from Long's Motor, but they're available from several different sources. So before we talk about the breakout board, we have to talk about parallel ports just for a few minutes. I'm not going to go into all the details about parallel ports and where they came from, but if you jump on Wikipedia, there's a very interesting uh, read on the development of the parallel port. And also, in your Mach 3 manual, there's a lot of really nice details on, on parallel ports and how they work. I'm just going to give you a little bit of information, and then we'll get into the breakout board. So parallel ports, uh, DB25 ports, they obviously as the name applies, have 25 pins. 12 of those pins are outputs, 5 of those pins are inputs, and the remaining 8 pins are uh, ground connections. So these parallel ports use something called TTL logic, I believe that's transistor to transistor logic. So any voltage between 0 and 8 volts is considered low and voltages between 2.4 and 5 volts are considered high. So I guess you could equate that into a 1 and a 0 somehow. I'm not sure. I'm not an electrical engineer. But 0 to 0 0.8 low, 2.4 to 5 high. So you could, if you were building a CNC conversion, I guess technically you could just wire all your inputs and outputs and everything right into the end of a, a parallel port. But uh, people use breakout boards, uh, A, because they have all these nice screw down connections, makes it easier to hook things up, but also B, the breakout board provides some type of uh, optical isolation between your, your CNC machine and your computer. Don't want to short out your parallel port, it could damage your computer. So there are many types of breakout boards. There's really expensive ones, there's cheap ones, there's breakout boards that have relays built into them. Some breakout boards have a 20, DB25 connection. They also have a, a USB connection to provide 5 volt power. There's lots of different types. This is the, as I mentioned earlier, the DB25-1205 breakout board, um, which I like. It's very basic. It literally just has inputs and outputs on it. It's very inexpensive, but they seem to work OK. So all breakout boards require some, some power. Um, this breakout board is being fed with a uh, 3 point amp or 3.8 amp 5 volt power supply. These are available on eBay. 3.8 amps is probably way more than you really need to run a parallel port. It probably would work fine with half of an amp. But I like these. They're uh, easy to mount in your, your control cabinet. They look cool. They're pretty reliable. And they have plenty of power to run all your switches and relays and circuits. So but you probably only need half of an amp. The um, manual that comes with these breakout boards has a very interesting little section in it talking about single and double power supply. And this is really confusing. I think it confuses a lot of people. Uh, a lot of the people that, uh, many of the people that buy my little CNC conversion kits, they send me emails asking me about this. So I'm gonna talk about it really quick. So J1 and J2 are these two jumpers that help you set whether you have single or double power supply. J1 is related to the ground. J2 is related to the 5 volts. And basically what this does, it allows you to, and I'm, I'm going to give you my best explanation of this, either have, you can either have one power supply that powers the whole board or you can have two power supplies. One power supply, I'm just going to say to, to power like the input, or the, I'll say the computer side of the board, the other power supply to power the CNC side of the board. So if you, if you take these two jumpers off, if you remove them, this ground and this 5 volt connection, they power, we're going to say, the computer side of the board. And then this, this jumper, VDD, this ground, they power the CNC side of the board. I'm not really sure what situation would necessitate that. Um, I'm just going to guess that most people, they can probably get away with a single power supply like I am, put the jumpers on, 
this VDD, this 5 volt, they get bridged. This ground and this ground, they become bridged. One power supply powers the whole thing. So there you go, that's everything I know about the single versus uh, double power supply as it's explained in the manual. So moving on, I have a very, very simple setup here. Power supply hooked up here. I have a relay hooked up to pin 16, output 16. These are your outputs, these are your inputs. And I have Mach 3 running. So let me give you a quick demonstration of uh, an output. So under config, ports and pins, output signals, I have output number three uh, attached to port number one, that's parallel port number one. It's tied to pin 16 and it's set to active low. Under spindle setup, I have output number three associated with the M8 coolant command. So, oops. Output 3, spindle setup, output 3 is tied to M8. So what that means is when I, when I press the coolant button, output 3 is enabled, and if you look at the relay that I have connected to it, you can see what's happening. As I, as I turn the coolant off and on, it's activating pin 16. Basically what it's doing is when I, when I click the button, it's sending a 5 volt signal out of that output to the relay to make it work. And that's basically the premise upon which all the outputs work on your, your board. So this ground, this ground, this ground, this ground, they're all the same ground. So I have the relay connected to the plus 5 volt, the ground on the power supply, and I have the input signal of the relay hooked to pin 16 on the breakout board. And that works really well, and um, hopefully that's pretty easy to see in the, the video. So those are your outputs. Let's talk about inputs really quickly. So if you come back up here to mock under ports and pins, input signals. Just to, to make it simple, I've made uh, pin 11 associated with the x-axis home and limiting, pin 12, pin 12 associated with the um, y-axis, and pin 13 associated with the z-axis, uh, home and limit switches, and I made pin 10 the index pulse and pin 15 the e-stop. So let's just look at that really quick and see how that works. So I have a short little cable here. I'm just going to manually, manually uh, jumper these. So here is should be the e stop. Yep, e stop is just triggered. This is index. So you can just see what I'm doing. I'm literally just jumpering um, pins this piece of wire. I'm, I'm closing the connection between the input pin and ground. And if you come up here and look at the Mach 3 screen, you can see what's happening. So let's just go with uh, e-stop. You can see e-stop is being triggered. This should be index. Here's the index pulse. Here is the uh, different home and limit switches. So it's really pretty simple. I'm literally just closing the connection between ground and the associated uh, pin. So there you go. So there's a really quick rundown on the uh, DB25-1205 breakout board from Long's Motor. And I hope this video was helpful.